Hello, everyone. Today we'll talk about the unique lock, which is a different lock than the lock guard. We'll also talk about how to handle lazy initialization in the threading environment. Let's start with the example we had last time. We have a class lock file. Inside lock file, we have a mutex mu, which is to synchronize the access of OF stream f. And inside the shared print function, before I writing anything to the f, I use a lock guard to lock the mutex. Using lock guard is one way of locking the mutex. Another way is calling the mutex's own lock and unlock function, which is not recommended. There is a third way to lock a mutex, which is using unique lock. Unique lock is similar to lock guard, but it provides more flexibility. Say, for example, after printing to OF stream, there are a bunch of other things that need to be done, but that doesn't require the mutex to be locked. Then with unique lock, I can actually unlock the mutex so that only this printing is synchronized with the mutex. So unique lock provides a more flexible way to implement a finer grained lock. With the unique lock, you can even construct the locker without actually locking the mutex. To do that, you need to pass over another parameter, defer lock. Now the locker is the owner of the mutex, but the mutex is not locked yet. Now you have the opportunity to do something else that doesn't access the OF stream, therefore doesn't need to lock the mutex. And before you start to write things into the OF string, you can lock the mutex. And sometime later, if you want to lock the mutex again, you can do that again. So you can lock and unlock arbitrarily number of times in the code, which you cannot do with lock guard. Note that a wrapper class of a mutex, whether it's lock guard or unique lock, can never be copied. However, a unique lock can be moved. When you move a unique lock, you are transferring the ownership of a mutex from one unique lock to another unique lock. So if I create another unique locker, locker2, I can use the move function to move the ownership of the mutex from locker to lock2. And a lock guard can never be moved. So these are the flexibilities that a unique lock can provide. You might want to ask, if a unique lock is so much more flexible than a lock guard, why do I want to use a lock guard at all? The flexibility of a unique lock is not free. The unique lock is a little bit more heavy weighted than a lock guard. So if the performance is what you're really concerned about, and you don't really need the extra flexibility of the unique lock, you might just use the lock guard. Now let me clean up some space to talk about something else. In this example, I have opened the log file in the constructor. But sometimes you don't want that. For example, if it turns out that the shared print has never been called, then I have opened the log file for nothing. Say I want to make sure the file will be open only if the shared print is called. Then instead of open the file in the constructor, I'm going to open it in the shared print function, and if the file is not open. So the file will be open only once in the shared print function. This is known as lazy initialization or initialization upon first use EDM. 
and the next thing I want to do is to make sure this program is thread safe. To do that, I need to use a mutex to synchronize the file opening process. I don't want to reuse this mutex because this mutex is used to print messages. And the print message could happen many, many times, but the file only needs to be open once. So I will use a different mutex. Call it open. And before I open the file, I will use unique lock mutex locker2 and you open. Now, before a thread can open the lock file, it has to lock the mutex. But is my program thread safe? Think about it. It is still not thread safe. Say I have two threads running, thread A and thread B. First, thread A come here and found that the file is not open, so it go ahead and lock the mutex and start opening file. And at, before it opens the file, thread B also comes here and found that file is not open yet, so it also try to lock the mutex. And of course being blocked over here. Once thread A has opened the file and exited the if block, thread B will get the mutex. And thread B will open the file again. So the file will be opened twice by two threads. So not only the open function needs to be synchronized, the isOpen function also needs to be synchronized. So, I will protect both operations with the same mutex. Now this program is thread safe, but it introduces another problem. The file only needs to be opened once, but now every time I call the shared print function, the program will lock the mutex, check if file is open, and then unlock the mutex. So all these locking and unlocking are purely wasting of computer cycles. And more importantly, those extra useless locking of mutex hinders the program from being run concurrently, which is very bad. The standard library provides a solution specifically for this kind of problem. Let me show you the solution. Instead of using another mutex, I'm going to use once flag. Let's call it flag. And we don't need all this locking and file checking. Instead, we only need to call this function. Standard call once flag and with the lambda function, which opens the file. This will make sure that this lambda function will be called only once and only by one thread. So comparing to what we have done before, our life becomes much easier, and our program is both efficient and accurate. That's all for today. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos I have. Bye-bye.